the next topic we're going to go to, we know that the Medicare system, the healthcare system in America sucks. It's just the worst. We know that. So something that I wanted to talk about with Gabe, he mentioned last week about a socialist healthcare system and a Medicare for all system. And I, I did some research and I, I wanted to dig into that a little bit. And I'm still on the, in the middle. I'm, I'm still on the fence between a full out single payer Medicare for all system versus a England socialist healthcare system. And you might be thinking they're both the same thing, right? No, we're about to go and dig in a little bit deeper into the differences. Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, I, I start this conversation by, by kind of giving a brief overview of the different types of healthcare systems. So you get uh, at, at one end of the spectrum, you get no health insurance, nothing, everything's out of pocket. The next level from that is what we have right now in the United States. You get some kind of health insurance uh, through your employer. If you lose your job, you lose your insurance. Uh, and this this is also called the for profit insurance model. These companies that are providing insurance here, um, they are profit. They're companies that are trying to be profitable, trying to be rep uh, representative of their stakeholder of their shareholders and make funds. Now, what's the, the problem with that? The problem with that is you automatically add about a 30 percent cost on top of whatever your cost of Medicare is because they have to cover their operating expenses. They have to cover when you call your insurance company, the people that are reviewing your claims, all this, all that is, is overhead. That's not necessarily necessary in our system. The next step from that is a public option system. It's basically the previous system, but the government also offers something that you can buy into a plan that is funded by the government. They preach it as the best of both worlds. What's the problem with this system is that when the private companies have the option of not covering everyone and the public option doesn't have the option of turning people away, you can get dirt cheap plans on the, the private side that will cover all of the healthy people, but then all of the sick people will be unloaded onto the taxpayers. And off the bat, that dooms the public option system even before it starts because mm -hmm. the public system can never compete with a system that can deny sick people. Um, anybody that's familiar with insurance, you understand that the people that don't have claims pay for those that do have claims. And, and, and when you get into this public option system, it's not the best, but so, some say it'll be a little bit better than a current system. Some say it'll be a little worse. We don't know. Now, the next step from that is, is what most progressives and states are for, which is the single healthcare slash Medicare for all. This means everyone pays taxes to a pot. There's no more insurance company. So you eliminate that 30% overhead that comes off the bat. So there's no need to work with somebody to negotiate with a company that really has no business in your healthcare insurance to try to get the coverage that you need. On the flip side, you have all of the healthy people are paying in and the people that actually need the care will get that care. The difference between health insurance and car insurance and all the other things is that everyone is eventually going to be a sick person. There's no one that's going to go through life that's never going to in, in their old age unless they unfortunately die young. There's no one that's ever going to not need the health care system. You get older, you need more care as you get into your age. When you get older, you might have a heart attack, you might have cancer, you might have anything. And at that time, the system covers. So you need a system that covers everyone, that you won't lose this system when you, you, you lose your job and that the government doesn't have to you know, put extra money in on the side. Another flip side, another point to make is that the government does pay for the health care of those that don't have it. So if you have somebody that goes into the emergency room right now, we pay for that as the taxpayers. People don't realize that. And, and if you have somebody that goes in because they had a heart attack, the hospitals are required to give them a treatment. And then that is all put on the, on the taxpayers. So the key principle or one of the key principles of why Medicare for all is cheaper is because we focus on prevention and we focus on treatment early versus on the current system, which we pay for, which is uh, just triage. Mm -hmm. Now, the on the far end is the English system. So the English system is truly a socialist system. When they call Medicare for all socialists, it's not socialist because although it's the government as a single payer, a single pot of money, you still have private providers all around the country. And if you're somebody who's a capitalist, you should love the system because if you truly believe in competition, those companies and those hospitals are competing with each other for the best care. 
and who's going to be the ones deciding who's the best the people the people don't have to worry about what's the cost here versus there they're going to go to the best doctors and they're going to go to who has the best treatment and then those people will then be given the money by the government it's not the government says you have to go here you pick your doctors so it's truly the the the, the balance of, of what capitalism is supposed to be in the medicare for all system on the english system it's it's a little bit different from what i understand is that it's the government pays uh they actually employ the doctors they actually build the hospitals they actually control the entire infrastructure and that's the difference between this one the, between what we're proposing on medicare for all and it's a very dark difference from the current american system so the the, the negative there more theoretical is, is 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 there enough competition in that system to make the best healthcare treatment available if the government is the only one providing healthcare insurance. I don't know the answer to that. I'm not a healthcare expert, but I do know that our current system is terrible and and is lead, leading people to 600,000 medical bankruptcies per year. So I want to toss it to you guys to get yeah. your opinions. Well, let me jump in um, here. Yeah. So basically, I got to credit, and I'm going to go transition to his website. I got to credit um, Howie Hawkins and him triggering triggering this in my mind. Um, basically, his plan and the Green Party's plan is go to from our system to a Medicare for all system. But then within 10 years, I believe the next phase would be to go to a national health system similar to what England has. And I'll just read this real quick. The second phase conducts a national assessment of unmet health care needs, develops a plan to meet those needs, implement the plan and convert the system to a fully public and democratically run healthcare service. Listening to Tom Hartman, he, he talks about natural monopolies, right? And a natural monopoly is basically anything that um, it doesn't have a real competition and they could abuse their market power. So for example, gas that goes to your home, um, the electricity grid, railways, broadband, and uh, tap water, you know, water. So we, we, as we can see, you don't have six or seven pipes going to your house. You know, it's not like sneakers where you have a hundred different companies who can sell you sneakers. Your house, you can only have a certain amount of pipes going to your house. And usually there's one with cable companies. And we see that with cable companies, they pay, they charge two up to $200 for internet, um, cable and phone. And if you look at other countries, they, their cable companies charge them a lot less, maybe. $40, $50 I've seen sometimes. Also, the post office is a natural monopoly. Now, there's other competition, FedEx, etc. But it's if you look at the healthcare system, like the post office as an essential good, I think that would be the, the mentality of thinking why the healthcare system should be uh, the, the standalone system overall and to move to a UK system because they don't put profit. That's the thing about the post office. They don't, they see themselves as a service, not as a company or a corporation looking to make a profit. So if we can change over to that system, I think it will be beneficial. I think we'll see a lot more cures. You know, they had an article, um, I think it was Goldman Sachs that was the, in the headline that said, is it even benefit us to come up with cures? And that's crazy to think about. You you would rather not come up with cures and, and ironically you come up with any type of medicine that will keep you coming back to them. Everything is about greed. Yeah. You look, I, I believe, and you know, anyone here, correct me if I'm wrong, it's like, you know, with this COVID situation that we have, right? If hospital, when you go to the hospital, it's my understanding that the minute if they if you go in with just a headache and they put you as a COVID patient, they get to charge, they get to charge more. Yeah. I think it's like $13,000 or something like that. I think I was reading about it. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be 100% sure, but I think I have to do a little bit more research on that. But it's also about that, right? If we have a whole system, they're not going to say, oh, if we have a pandemic, let's charge this person, you know, $13,000 versus $4,000. It's, you know, it's everything is one flat fee. And we're not going to focus so much on just being so greedy. Uh, one thing I found when I was doing research on this, because I, I had always been a, a proponent of the English system, I found that they do, um, in general, have the cheapest healthcare costs across, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the major developed nations. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there are, you know, some sh um, shortcomings of that system where they, sure. you know, I guess people who have diabetes don't necessarily live, live as long as even people here in the U.S. do. Um, same thing with cancers as you get, you know, later stage cancers, they, they, they're, for whatever reason, their fatality rates are a little higher 
So I'm not sure if that's due to the system or some other factor, but um, I guess what I would say is that, you know, anything, whether it's Medicare for all or the English English system is going to be way cheaper than what we have today. Totally. So already you cut the cost right right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And if we can have Medicare for all and still keep our, you know, better, uh, you know, rates for for keeping people alive who have diabetes and, and cancer and all that. Great. Then I'm all for the Medicare for all system over the English system. That's I guess, you know, if it really comes down to it and we needed to save a few extra bucks and the UK system helps us do that. OK, mm -hmm. fine. But uh, I think that Medicare for all would be a great start. I think that's an excellent point that you brought up because we have other um, industries. I did not even talk about the school system. Right. We have public schools, which is we've made uh, school a, a human right in America. But we can see that conservatives and bad government has cut, cut, cut and has um, funded schools in poor ways in poor neighborhoods, you know, and, and that's a, a downside of having a industry in the government's hands. So that's where we, the people as the government, because a lot of people think of the government as that entity far off that they can't influence, but I consider government as we, the people where we can influence it. It would definitely be something that we would have to stay vigilant. You see in England right now, they have a conservative government that is trying to slowly privatize. Recently, um, Donald Trump was trying to use trade agreements to um, influence their healthcare system. You know, so they're they're scheming just like how they scheme in the primaries to get their person, their establishment candidate in there. They're scheming around these public goods, these public systems. We see in Flint how they had a privatized water system. And now we know what happened in Flint with lead full of water. So when you put profits above the people, this is what these are the things that happen. I'm going to show one more clip. If you have that system where government's in charge of everything, you get a lot of control. You get a lot of control. You know the reason doctors make house calls in Britain? is because they make 20 pounds or $26 more per call if they go to your house. And it's worth it to them. Quite often their patients, particularly in London, are within a few blocks. You want, you want uh, more house calls? Fine. The system pays for them and you get them. We all know that in the United States we have a serious shortage of primary care doctors. This is true in a lot of countries. It's not only our problem. But Britain, 64% of the docs are primary care doctors. Why would that be? Well, the system decided they needed more primary care doctors. And in Japan, a family doctor makes twice, I mean in Britain, I'm sorry. In Britain, a family doctor makes twice as much as a cardiac surgeon. Guess what? 65% of them what are What about specialized doctors. costs, like, or specialized care, like an inhaler or an EpiPen? I would say it's probably higher. Okay, it's, it's actually nine pounds Just nine. Um, okay. for any medication, which is about $12. Okay, okay, so they are cheaper. So they are cheaper. What do you think of that? Um, I am still for individual in um, medical care. Have you ever um, not sought treatment because you're afraid of a cost? No, ma'am. Do you know anyone who has? No, ma'am. What about people who are afraid of the cost of, say, an ambulance? Okay, that happens all the time because we have so many Americans that don't want to go in debt and they're trying to save money and they think they can go buy a car instead of an ambulance. Uh, so what would you think if that service was free? If that service was free, um, anything that's free, sometimes it's not worth having. <laughs> I mean, man, come on. This is the work we got to do. England, you, you see what we got to deal with over here? Like, this, yeah, it, that sounds a lot better over there, man. Yeah, it, it is crazy. <laughs> it, it's absolutely crazy. This is the type of uh, smear. It's been going on for since the, the 19, I think, 1930s, the AMA even had Ronald Reagan do propaganda on their behalf to to go against Medicare. Um, in that time, they were just trying to help out old, older people. And um, Ronald Reagan was trying to propagandize against it. So, you know, one thing mm -hmm. I want to say about the insurance companies is that, you know, to, to put into perspective, to let you know that we just got to get rid of them, is that just think of another company that makes money by not giving you service. Yeah. You're paying them every month in your premiums. And the only way they make money is by not giving you service. Exactly. Yeah. So, so what, what, one, one thing I wanted to share, like that, that, that hit me from that video is just how many people are, are, 
avoiding service. Like, so for example, I'm, I'm lucky to have good insurance in this country. It's what we consider very good insurance. And recently I'll share personal headaches where it wasn't like a migraine. It was just a headache that would always be there. It would be like a three or four on the pain scale and it just wouldn't go away for weeks and weeks. So I'm like, first thing you think, holy crap, I have a brain tumor, I have an aneurysm, do I have cancer? So I was lucky to be able to go get an MRI that came back fine. I was able to get uh, a CT scan. I was able to get a, a angiogram final test they did on me that came clean. But it, I even that test was $2,000 out of pocket. It's a, a Without insurance, that test cost $20,000. I don't know many Americans that could afford just on a random day to throw $2,000, let alone $20,000 at a thing. And I was lucky to be able to do that, to, to clear of whether or not do I really have something wrong with me. I have friends and a family of friends that have had aneurysms and died and been seriously. So it really hits homes to me. But I can guarantee if I had to pay $20,000 for that angiogram, I wouldn't have gotten it. I would have said, you know what, I, I, I'm just going to have to postpone it. I'm going to have to see if it gets worse, maybe it gets worse. And while I'm lucky that I didn't have anything, what if I didn't have insurance and there was something wrong and I did push that off? You know, it could be that, that I could have a, 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 something that could have been preventable, that could have been treated. And by postponing that because of the cost, it, something terrible could have happened. So I'm lucky that that hasn't happened, but it, it kills me in my heart for the Americans that are making those decisions every day based off a of cost when that shouldn't be the case. Yeah. And then you get people that always will tell you like, oh yeah, I have great insurance. Uh, they'll cover 80% of the cost. <laughs> and you see the other 20% and you're like, oh my God, what happened? Like, how am I coming out two, three thousand dollars out of pocket? What's the point of really, I thought I had really good insurance. Put in the comments below if you have any stories about any horror stories about Medicare system and how you use it in America, or do you have any stories of living in another country and how that went? Please let us know in the comments below. I know we have some followers from Europe who would love to hear about your system up there. <laughs>